In this video, I would like to provide a quick proof for this interesting math equality in which we are saying that the sum of the fifth power of uh, the consecutive integers is equal to this portion, which is the right-hand side of the equation that says is equal to 1.5, the sum of the squared integers for consecutive integers, and then raised to the power 2, minus 0.5, the sum of consecutive integers raised to the power 2. And it's very powerful equality because it says this is valid for any n. So this is it says this is valid for any n as a positive integer. So belong to set of positive integer. So n can be anything including 1, 2, 3, 4, and up to infinity. Okay, so how can we prove this quickly? Uh, one of the best way, I mean, there are a couple of ways, but one of the best way to do this quickly is mathematical induction. So math induction. And in math induction method, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to check a couple of things. We're going to say, hey, let's refer to the statement that you're saying this left-hand side shown here is equal to this right-hand side shown here. Let's refer to that as P of n statement as a function of n that says such left-hand side is equal to such right-hand side. So in mathematical induction, what we are doing is we are saying, let's check the basis step in which we are going to say, check the validity of this thing you're saying for pn equal to 1. Okay, after that, we're going to go with the inductive step or induction step in which we say, like a domino, in domino, you check the first domino, and if it drops, uh, you go to the nth domino, and you drop it, and you try to see whether it results in the domino keep going on. So in inductive step, we're going to say, hey, make the assumption that your p of n is true. So assume p of n, which you just said it. Assume for n, p of n is true, or p of k is true. doesn't matter. That's the name of variable. And we refer to this as induction hypothesis or inductive hypothesis or assumption. That's all, just, just the meaning, just the name. And we say then make that assumption, but then prove or conclude that, that P of n plus 1 is true as well. That's the part we need to prove. Okay, so we use this assumption. We need to prove this. Okay, so let's just start with the basis step quickly. That's easy because it says set n equal to 1 and don't go above that. So let's check the... Let's do that, but uh, maybe the best thing to do is I'm going to check the left-hand side and right-hand side. Left-hand side, it only is 1 to the 5 because we are not supposed to go above that, because we are limiting n equal to 1. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to get 1 to the power 5. On the right-hand side, as you can see, I'm going to get... I'm going to get these guys. And of course, don't forget about the power 2. So as a result, what I'm getting is... 1.5 times 1 to the 2, this guy. So 1 to the 2, and then to the power 2. So 1 to the 2 to the power 2, minus 0. 0.5, times 1 to the power 2. So times 1 to the power 2. And of course, we can see this side, which is the left-hand side, is 1. And this whole thing, right-hand side, is 1 as well. So we have a match. 1 is equal to 1. Done. Basis of step checks. So this one is good. Let's move on to let's move on to the other. Okay, so let's keep that all right. Let's move on to the inductive step. For inductive step, um, people for example refer to as assume P of K is true, then prove P of K plus one is true. Doesn't matter, it's just a name here. So uh, let's assume that this is statement that is shown here left-hand side equal to right-hand side is your p of n. Assume that is correct, but then show that p of n plus 1 true. 
what is PLN plus one? So uh, I'm gonna uh, stick with the green color here. PLN plus one is this. Uh, is going to be, maybe I'll go back to the uh, color that I had. Okay, so it's one to the five plus two to the five plus three to the five plus dot 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 n to the five and then n plus one to the power five. That is what we have for the left hand side of the equality. It says check and prove this is equal to the stuff that you have on the right hand side, which means 1.5 this guy times whatever we have here up to n plus one. So 1 to the 2 plus 2 to the 2 plus 3 to the 2 plus ellipsis dot 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 and then n to the 2 but we have to keep going on n plus 1 to the 2 and maybe we can use just bracket and raise to the power 2. That's one component. Next one is negative 0.5 and then this one up to n plus 1 to the power 2. So point negative 0.5 and we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus n plus n plus 1 to the power 2. Okay, so we're going to use a quick trick, and that quick trick is as simple as this. I'm going to refer to this portion as A. I'm going to refer to this portion as B. reason I do that is because it enabled me to use the stuff from the hypothesis of induction, which relies on P of n. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, I'm going to just uh, rewrite this whole thing now. So, uh, and uh, of course, to prove the equality between the right hand side and left hand side, I can see that the busy side is the left hand side. So, I'm going to start from left hand side and see whether we can get to the right hand side. A combination of A and B will give me this portion. Actually, I'm going to show you. So the rest of the stuff here should give me this guy. That's the plan. So first, let's deal with this. All right, expand this. So remember, we have to raise things to the power two. Okay, so left-hand side of, so left-hand side of P of n plus one, because we are dealing with P of n plus one. So left-hand side of that is 1.5, this component to the power 2. And remember, this is your A. So if I um, just make sure that I highlight it with a proper color, this is A. So we have A squared. So 1.5 A squared because of this guy. And uh, minus 0.5 B squared. So minus 0.5 b squared. That's it. This thing is, is what you have here, which means this thing, if I shift it down so that it's easier to see this whole thing, okay, this thing is exactly what you want here is match according to uh, mathematical induction. So I'm going to write math hi induction hypothesis, basically. So using induction or inductive hypotheses, hypotheses, which basically means, hey, I am using, I am using the assumption that you allowed me to assume because you told me that P of n is true, which means exactly these two guys are equal. Okay, so that leaves me with the last task that I need to do, which is prove that the, these two guys, so prove that this is coming from whatever remaining here. Um, so let's do that. Okay, so for the rest of it, I'm going to just write plus. 1.5 times, of course, you're raising to the power 2 these two guys. So what you have, effectively, you have A plus 1 plus um, 
n plus 1 to the power 2 to the power 2. So obviously we get a squared, which we took care of it. Um, don't forget about 1.5 behind. And then we get 2 times 1.5, 3. And then a n plus 1 squared. And then finally we get 1.5 n plus 1 to the power 4. The reason I wrote quickly because I wanted to write it just here. So uh, three components generated here. One of them is shown here. The two more, I'm going to write them here. Uh, 1.5 uh, two times 2, 3. And then a times n plus 1 to the power 2. And uh, 1.5 just n plus 1 to the power 4. And for the other one, same story. You get the b square minus 0.5 b square taken care of here. So two other components remain, minus 0.5 times 2 times n plus 1 times b. So it become minus b times n plus 1. And finally, minus uh, 0.5 times n plus 1 squared. So minus 0.5 n plus 1 squared. Okay, so all I need to do, and I need to show this thing is equal to that. That's it. And we are done. To prove it, it's easy, not difficult. I need to use very well-known uh, equations that basically says the sum of consecutive integers as we refer to it as b, is equal to just n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So that is the b that I have here. And also it says the sum of squared integers for consecutive integers, which we refer to it as a, this a, is just n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 2n divided by 3, which means divide by 6. So all I'm going to do to solve the problem and finish the whole thing quickly is I'm going to just substitute using these two for B and A in here. So let's do that. Okay, so I get, I get three times instead of A, I'm going to use this guy. So 3 times n times n plus 1. And don't forget, you have n plus 1 to the power 2 here. So we need to be super careful that uh, as a result of that, what I'm going to get is 3 times n plus 1 to the power 3, because there is a power 2 coming here in addition to n plus 1 that we have here. So n, and then we have finally 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So 2n plus 1 divided by 6. We also have plus 1.5 n plus 1 to the power 4, which is this guy. And uh, we get minus b, which is this guy, which means here. So minus and we have additional n plus 1 that multiply this n plus 1. So minus n times n plus 1 to the power 2 divided by 2. And finally, for the last component, we have here, which means minus <clears throat> n plus 1 to the power 2. And for 0.5, I'm going to just write divide by 2. Okay, almost there. I'm going to factor out. Uh, these two guys, I can rewrite them as minus n plus 1 to the power 3 divided by 2. So you can see that this component, this component, and this component, there is at least n plus 1 to the power 3 in all of these things. I'm going to factor out n plus 1 <clears throat> to the power 3, and then I'm going to factor also, also I'm going to factor out divide by 2 out of everything. So n plus 1 to the power 3 divided by 2 times. For uh, when, when I factor that out for the first component, what remains is just n times 2n plus 1. For the second component, what remains is 3 times 
n plus 1. For the last component that I showed you, what remains is just uh, basically just minus 1. Okay, so let's see what, how, what what is this thing. This thing obviously is 2n squared plus n plus 3n and then plus 2, which is, and this is just the stuff here. Okay, and uh, obviously this becomes 2n squared plus 4n plus 2, which is obviously 2 times n plus 1 squared. And we are done. Because what we showed is, if I highlight it, what we showed here is this portion is equal to 2n plus 1. 2 times n plus 1 squared. So that multiplied with this guy, that multiplied with this guy will give us exactly, so what I get is n plus 1 to the power 3 divided by 2 times 2 times n plus 1 to the power 2, which is obviously n plus 1 to the power 5. That's exactly what I was chasing. See, I wanted to prove one more time. I wanted to prove that these two portions are equal. Um, if I highlight it with different color, this guy in, let's say, blue color is equal to this guy in blue color, which I just did. I proved that they are. And this concludes the proof by mathematical induction because basically I proved that uh, the basis step is correct. And I proved that the inductive step is also correct uh, because I started with P of N, assuming that P of N is true. And I proved that as a result, P of N plus 1 is also true as well. This concludes mathematical induction and concludes the proof for this problem. I hope that this example is helpful, not only uh, showcasing a very nice and beautiful uh, mathematical equality, but also um, showing or, or as a sort of uh, review of uh, how to apply mathematical induction to prove um, this interesting equality.